I'm thrilled to introduce Bargis Choham, founder of the award-winning multicultural fashion and lifestyle brand Bargis. Bargis also heads up a social enterprise foundation, the Bargis Initiative, which supports overlooked communities with the aim to tackle the lack of diversity and class barriers that can hold back communities. Today, Bargis will address the million dollar question, is there a way to up happiness levels in the workplace? In this inspiring session, Bargis will show us the positive connection between well-being and our working environment and lay out the tools we need to connect with our colleagues and teams and how understanding cultural nuances and creating a more diverse, dynamic workplace leads to inclusion, empowerment and happiness. Bargis, a big warm welcome to you. Thank you so much uh, for joining us today. Really looking forward to your session. Over to you. Hello there, how are you? Uh, it's wonderful to be here today. I just feel so privileged and humbled to be invited to speak today. Um, this topic is very close to my height, to be honest, but before we actually proceed, I would like to share my 21 years journey with a short video. Thank you. I would like to start off with um, an interesting quote that kind of resonates um, with me and where we are today in this world. We do not see the things as they are, we see things as we are. Now this is really, really interesting. It's a quote from Anne Nin. It's, it's just one of those quotes that could be challenging at times because it stops us from interacting with people from different various cultures. And I say this because I have faced this quite a lot, especially when I'm going into meetings. People kind of see me the way I look, but not who I am. And sometimes it makes me feel sad, but I also am not in a position to pass judgment because I'm the same too. We tend to see the same thing like it could be one object, but two people will see it differently. They will interpret it differently, depending on their life experiences, depending on their conditioning. So what I want to talk about today is how we can connect at a human level. As we know that the situation in the world has changed and we have to adapt to this new normalcy, this new way of living, this new way of working, Cultural diversity provides a sense of belonging, a sense of security. We all want to feel part of something big. And what I want to talk about is how we as human beings can really get to know each other and make each other happy. I've got a lot of success stories, a lot of highs, a lot of lows, a lot of bad experiences, but a lot of wonderful experiences. But I'm not going to kind of just invest a lot of time talking about all the negativity that I have faced um, in the design industry, even though it, it is something that I need to talk about. But there is one particular incident that still kind of shakes me to the core. When I set up my fashion business, I wanted to invite, um, you know, a lot of credible people in the market to showcase my collection. So I thought that I need to approach a PR firm to do that. So I shortlisted some PR firms. Um, one particular gentleman, he invited me. I went to the meeting with my colleague and it was wonderful. It was great. Um, he loved my work, but he sat me down and he said to me, Bajiz, you graduated long time ago. You're Pakistani. You're a Muslim. You wear a headscarf you've got children, it's going to be really difficult for you to break into the fashion world. He said it's a different world and maybe 
Maybe you might make it, maybe you might not make it. I just looked at him uh, pleasantly surprised. One part of me really wanted to thank him for his honesty. And one part of me wanted to say, is it possible to change the narrative? instead of you trying to highlight all my weaknesses, well, as far as he's concerned, were the things, the obstacles that I'm going to be facing. But why not say, okay, you know, your work is great. Let's make it work. I would like to represent you. So I think the way we speak has an important part in how people connect with us. And it's really important that we use the right tools. Be flexible at work. That's the first thing we have to do. 80% of the people who have filled in a questionnaire with McKinsey say that they would prefer working from home. I mean, that, that's huge, 80%. But within those 80%, I would say there would be some people who would prefer coming to work, especially the younger generation who actually need coaching, who needs guidance, who needs mentoring, where they need that constant support to really nurture their skills and talent. And there are some people who've got young families who would prefer actually working from home because they want to do the school runs, they want to pick up their children, they want to do all the activities with their children, but at the same time, they want to work. Then it could be the seniors who actually prefer coming to work. Their children have left the nest and they want to come to interact because for them, it's quite lonely being at home and sitting and working in front of the computer. So I think the workplace needs to be flexible and open, but everyone should have the opportunity to kind of convey the concerns of what they would prefer working from home or working at an office. Do not judge people. I think that's really important. We tend to do, we all do it, we're human beings. We're flawed, but it's really important not to judge. Um, I went to um, this organization and as I'm quite British and I spoke to him on the phone from London and he said, yeah, come down. We're going to do business with you. We love your work. But then when I got there, once again, I was faced with this obstacle. They made an excuse and they canceled the meeting. And I felt, I felt really sad that even in the Middle East, being a Muslim, it would be more accommodating. But people do judge. They do judge. And unfortunately, how do we, over, how do we break out of that judgment? I think it's important to listen before speaking. We tend to listen to respond. But we need to listen to understand. I think there are a lot of similarities between us, but there are a lot of differences. And it's important to embrace and celebrate those differences. Connect at a human level, especially middle managers who are dealing with the staff that working with, but also their bosses. They need to be empathetic. They need to be trained. Um, on you know, the, the experiences all the staff members have had during COVID, and it hasn't been pleasant. So it's really important that you be empathetic and you really listen hard. Convey sensitivity. There are a lot of people who, who have experienced bereavement at this time. It's really important that we watch what we say. Just two simple words, like for example, how are you? That's showing pity, but if we change that to how are you feeling, all of a sudden that opens up the door. It's more empowering, it's, it's more empathetic. So just changing how we speak to one another, it's really, really important. Do not impose your own set of values on others. I think this is really important. When I started out, I worked for Vivian Westwood. It was the most amazing experience for me. But every day I was a young, young girl. I didn't know what happy hour was. And even though I'm British, I've been raised in London. I seriously, in my early 20s, didn't know what was happy hour because I've never really experienced it. So every day at Vivian Westwood, at five o'clock, everyone used to, used to stop everything 
and say, oh, it's happy hour. And I used to think with my naivety that they're just going in the other room and they're probably going to play snooker or they're going to do some kind of some activity together. I didn't realize that it's just going to the pub. <laughs> it was really funny. And I felt pathetic. I felt like so, you know, I was just out of this world. But it's just these little things that, you know, people don't understand. Um, and it was something that I couldn't really do because my parents wouldn't allow it because we don't drink alcohol. So I did go once, but then after that, I had to make excuses. So I think it's really important to understand where people come from, understand cultural nuances. For example, when I did my fashion show at Dubai Fashion Week, I wish I had an Arabic um, girl or, or a man working with me because while we were doing the fashion show, uh, you know, it was appreciated, but there was one dress where the abaya was two inches above the ankle line and it was extremely offensive for that particular market. But if I had someone who was Arab, they would have told me that Bajis, that dress will not work for that market. So even me, um, I was ignorant because I didn't understand the cultural nuances. Treat others as they want to be treated. I think that's really important. Um, you, we need to um, up our standards in terms of how we actually communicate with people and also learn um, what makes them sensitive, what kind of offends them. It's important to ask the right questions. Ask how you can help them. A lot of people are struggling at the moment financially. This is a big problem. It's like they're going to work, but you know they've got financial worries. One of their partners probably in furlough or they're not working. They're, they're finding it hard to make ends meet. It's just asking the right questions and asking how we can help each, each other. Find commonalities and passions to build connections. What is it? How can we connect? Maybe it's a book, maybe it's a movie, maybe it's a sport. Try to listen and understand each other at a human level. I think a quiet room, I wouldn't say it's a multi-faith room, but a quiet room where people can just go for a few minutes, just breathe, do some mindfulness exercises, pray, maybe just clear the head because there's a lot of things going on in people's minds and it's really important that we give them that space. Um, bereavement is something that, you know, all of a sudden you can feel overwhelmed. If, they, if there is that quiet room where they can just go there for a few minutes and just clear their head. More diversity at senior level, that's really important. Um, whether you're old or young, man or woman, people of color, white, Whatever, there should be diversity, especially at the senior boardroom level, because it really makes a difference to the organization's culture. It's OK to call peers. We don't have to call them just because we're talking about work. We can check up on people. Just say, hi, how are you doing? How's it going? How's your family? We need to stop this, that we, we only call people when we need something from them. We need to really connect. And the only way to connect is go back to basics. Be willing to learn and adapt. You know, it's a work in progress. We, people change. Sometimes there is this negative stereotype. We're thinking that all Muslims pray. No, not all Muslims don't pray. It, it's, it's like sometimes we just kind of box people together, thinking that if this works for this person, this will work for that. But no, you, we need to learn. We need to adapt. Remain curious, remain humble, be willing to learn, learn about different cultures, about human beings. Ask the right questions. That's really important. What makes you happy? How can I make you happy? How can I help you to achieve your goals? Trust your staff to get the job done. No micromanagement. I think it doesn't work. Give people that importance, make them feel that they are important. Because I really feel if we want to connect, we need to give people importance. I would like to um, quote, the illiterate of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read and write, 
but those who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. And finally, there's another quote that I really feel um, is important for today's, for today's generation, for the workplace, and for our lives, because they have changed, and we have to change. It is not the strongest of the species that survives, nor the most intelligent that survives. It is the one that is the most adaptable to change, and that's from Charles Darwin. I just want to take this opportunity to really kind of home in and put this message across that we are all connected, we're all the same. There are, there are some things that we're universally the same, like friendship, respect, trust, honor. Let's look at our similarities and try to uplift each other because we're all in it together and we need to change the, 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 the atmosphere we're around, the environment that we're around, and the retail industry has suffered a lot. And because of this, we need to unite and empower each other. Thank you very much.